I'm challenging Honorable Amin Anta to publish the way he published this document. Mm -hmm. Publish the letter from the IMF and the letter from the World Bank stating that Ghana is at risk of losing any of, this, any, any of these funds. I have spoken to sources within the IMF and the World Bank, and they assure me that they have not made any such formal indication to the government of Ghana. They haven't made any such formal indication? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And you see, to, you see because God does not like lies, he ab in fact, he detests and abhors lies, Uganda passed a legislation. And in fact, they've referenced Uganda in some of their conversations mm -hmm. that Uganda is facing stiff penalties. On the 6th of March, Ghana's Independence Day, the IMF released a press release number 24-72, heading, IMF Executive Board completes fifth review under the Extended Credit Facility Arrangement for Uganda. Uganda passed the law last year that punishes LGBTQ with death. Now, this is what the press statement from the IMF says. March 6, 2024. The executive board of the IMF concluded today the fifth review of Uganda's extended credit facility. This completion enables the immediate disbursement of the equivalent of special drawing rights, that's SDR, 90.25 million, about 120 million US dollars. Just on the 6th, last uh, Wednesday, this past Wednesday, Uganda has been disbursed $120 million. And you said this was on the 6th of March? 6th of March. I see. Press IMF website, press release number 24 stroke 72. So even Uganda, that has death as the punishment in their bill, is still getting releases under their IMF program. How then will Ghana, that has a three-year punishment, face a stiff penalty? This is a statement attributed to the IMF. They say they will comment on the passage of this proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values bill by parliament only after it has been signed into law. According to the fund, this would only follow an assessment of the economic and financial implications of the bill. In fact, there's a statement that I'm quoting from, from the IMF. Absolutely. And I know you've seen that statement. Uh, diversity and inclusion are values that the IMF embraces. The IMF did and, say... And this, is, and this is the heart of this oh, absolutely. Uh, opposition to so, the bill. So you see, the IMF did not say that once the bill is passed, they will withdraw or withhold funding. They said they would conduct an assessment of economic implications of the bill. Economic and financial Economic implications. and financial implications. Right. They did the same in Uganda. When Uganda passed its legislation in March 2023, they carried out an economic and financial assessment of the, of the, of the, of the law that was passed and determined that it had no consideration on the economy of, 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 of uh, Uganda. And Uganda's economy is just worth 53 billion. Mm -hmm. Ghana's economy is 78 billion. They, unless and until anybody can show us what the financial and economic implications of this bill are in an adverse manner to Ghana's government, the IMF statement in itself vindicates my position. This and their action, their action in Uganda, after Uganda passed a bill that punishes the same thing we are punishing with maximum three years, with death, they went ahead to say, this is your matter. And you know why? Because I've always made the point. The IMF in their statement say, diversity and the inclusion. inclusion. There are values that the IMF embraces. Good. Now, diversity and inclusion as values mean that you, you respect and accommodate all shades of opinion. Indeed. Be they straight or gay. Are you considering and respecting the views and opinions of the gay I community? I am not the IMF. That is the IMF. And so that is why the IMF cannot punish Ghana for taking a position as a sovereign state that we are a straight nation. How far can you If we say, uh, I'm coming, let me just land on this point. If we say we are a straight nation, the IMF will work with us as a straight nation. If another country or another entity comes and says they are gay, they will also work with them. But the IMF cannot say that because you are straight, I will not, I will not work with you. Then that will mean that the IMF is a part of the gay lobby. And the IMF says they are diversity and inclus inclusion oriented. So diversity means they work with people who are straight. They work with people who are gay. Why? Is it everybody who works at the IMF? From the, the, the executive director of the IMF, the, are, are, are they all gay people? No. You, you talk about Ghana being a sovereign state. I mean, how can we push this? How far, in fact, can we push this sovereignty argument when 
we go cap in hand begging. When we, 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 our sovereignty has limitations financially and economically, and that's why we're subservient to these institutions that would tell you this. So you're talking about the sovereignty of a state that cannot flex its financial muscles. How far can you go with that? That's right. It brings me to the question of why are we even with the IMF? It's simply because the same people who are blackmailing us and telling us that we won't get money from the IMF superintendent so over the worst decline of our economy. The finance ministry is responsible for managing the finances of our state. The president is responsible for ensuring the sustainability of our economy. He and his running mate, who tells us now that he's a mate and is now more of an IT guru boy than an economic whiz kid as he was sold to us, have messed up the economy. And after messing up the economy, they have the effrontery, the temerity, to look you and I in the face and tell you that we have messed up the economy so bad, we need to mortgage the innocence of your children and my children and the children of Ghanaians for $700 million, Ghana, uh, million dollars a year. Because the 3.8 billion is over five years. It's not one year. So it means that for the managers of our economy, they've collateralized Get Fund, collateralized National Health Insurance, collateralized uh, ESLA, collateralized everything in this country. Now they want to collateralize the innocence of Ghanaian children. So they want to collateralize our cultural heritage for $700 million. It's a shame. Look, until and unless we begin to we begin to assert ourselves and own the levers of Ghana's economy. We cannot, we cannot continue. The president is the one who said Ghana beyond AIDS. But, but, but he that's, said, that's, he said that's, Ghana that's beyond AIDS. That's the reality we're dealing with right now. So this is a fantastic about opportunity. The, the, so the sovereignty of Ghana and that we should uphold our sovereignty. We are begging. We are begging because even at a time where our central bank declared bankruptcy, literally declared bankruptcy, where Ghana as a state is bankrupt, we are not paying any of our external obligations. We are asking foreign lenders to Ghana to take haircuts. We've, 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 we've given haircuts to pensioners in Ghana. The Bank of Ghana has made a loss of 60 billion unheard of in the history of Ghana. At that time, the office of the president has increased the budget allocation to the office of the president. So it is the irresponsibility of the leaders of our country. When the president and, 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 and his vice are living like Arabian knights and kings, and leaving the rest of the population to run on a shoestring budget. There is austerity. They are cutting the budget of ministries that provide social services to the people of Ghana. But the Office of Government Machinery has increased its budget. You must begin to question where the problem is. Is our problem really the IMF or the people who are leading us? Well, this is the, the IMF is saying that well, for as long as you continue to rely on them for help, their internal policies prohibit discrimination based on personal characteristics, including but not limited to gender, gender expression or sexual orientation. And I've said to you, with all of this same thing, they've just released $120 million to Uganda. So, so except the people who are interfacing with the IMF on behalf of Ghana are actually the ones pushing this gay agenda, the IMF will respect the sovereignty of a state. Because, and, and look, with, that, with the greatest of respect to Uganda, when it comes to the Committee of Nations, and when you come to Africa as a, as, a, as, a, as a continent, and you want to talk of countries that play a lead role, that are important in, the, in, the, in, the, in international relations and international conversations, Ghana plays a leading role than Uganda. Ghana is, is, is more at the forefront than Uganda. And listen, the West needs Ghana. The West needs Ghana. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, and I have made this point. When the American ambassador, Virginia Palmer, makes the case she makes, I make the simple point that any American business operating in Ghana today is not doing so because of LGBTQ. They are doing so because they are making a profit. And they would not leave Ghana because of LGBTQ when they look at their profit margin. And if they choose to pack bag and baggage and leave, another company will come in and make that profit. Ghana is a profitable country to do business in. And so we must, we must stop cheapening ourselves and making it look like we have no sense of self-worth. And I, that's why I question the president's circle of friends. Because the president said he's assuring Ghana's friends. Well, they're not Ghana's friends. They are his friends. Because no, that's, my, that's the Alfred, diplomatic community. Alfred, they're the friends Alfred, of Ghana, Alfred, not Alfred, the president Alfred, as an individual. Alfred, the president, the president as a former foreign affairs minister must have read Article 42 of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. Article 42 prohibits ambassadors of foreign missions in Ghana from doing what many of them are doing. Which is, what have they done? Which now? is involving themselves in local politics. But you know what, Kwame Pianim, a respected economist, says that 
if the IMF has to take any decision at all when it comes to this anti-LGBTQ plus bill, which you, members of parliament, have passed into law, it should be targeted at you, the MPs, for taking this decision. You should bear the brunt of whatever sanctions they would slap on Ghana because of that decision that you took. I speak for myself. I don't care. You don't care? And I've said it. Look, and I've said you, it. You're ready to bear if, the, if, the, if, the, if the you, and if the action? If any country leads a sanction on the speaker or myself or the sponsors, I would wage a campaign in this country against all their business interest. And don't, don't underestimate the power of the forces of Ghanaians when we say we will shut down those businesses. It is, look, if they want to threaten us, we will issue threats. And I'm issuing that on your platform. If they touch the speaker or any member of parliament, we will come after their business interest he in says Ghana. your S. Gracia should be withheld. That's one of the issues that should be of concern to the Ghanaian people. Ex Gracia, you see, and someone respected senior like Kwame Penim should know that this conversation of ex Gracia is a whole conversation on his own. How much well, is the ex Gracia? You are paying, as we speak, I'm in the fourth year of, this, of my second term in parliament. I don't know what my salary is. So if finally the presidential so emolument you committee... You don't, you don't know what your salary is. You are not, you I, don't are have, not, I don't have terms of conditions. There are no terms of conditions for any member of parliament in this parliament, in the 8th parliament. We are being paid on the terms of conditions of the 7th parliament. So when they determine in, in, in maybe October what the mm -hmm. terms of conditions, the presidential emolument commission determines what the terms of conditions are, definitely nobody's salary. The law, Labour Act says you can't reduce somebody's salary. So definitely there will be increases. The differential... Is what is then lumped up over 48 months and paid to me. Is that an ex-gracia? You are paying me my salary differential. So what is this ex-gracia conversation? And that's why I think that the respected Kwame PNM should know better than, than to... But like I said, if they think they have the power to issue threats to anybody in Ghana, they should go ahead. It's within their legitimate right. But it also is within our legitimate right for me to lead a demonstration and shut down their businesses. It will be fair. It will be quid pro quo. And they should wait. And prepare for it. Aren't you pushing this this uh, argument to, to the extreme? And I'm sure you've heard this before that the 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 consequences of this position could outlive this administration. And if, for instance, the NDC should win power in 2024, this election, you probably are going to be bearing the the consequences of some of the decisions that may be taken because of your stance. Let me state this here and now and end this conversation once and for all. This is not a political issue. It's about my it, children. It has, it has political. No, 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 no. Legs. Wait, no, no. The has, suggestion is that the suggestion is that I should think about ah, John Mahama, by God's grace, will be the president in 2025. John Mahama has at least on four public occasions stated that he does not believe in rights for LGBTQ or he does not believe in LGBTQ rights as a universal right. And that our society is the Ghanaian people are against it. As a leader, I would expect him to walk his talk as president of Ghana in 2025. You expect him to walk his talk? Absolutely. I mean, and I would demand same of him. The same way I'm demanding of President Akufado, I would demand same of him. That, that legislation will stand. I, I would oppose any decision by a future NDC government to say they are going to walk back this act. I will fight it. Because, like I said, it's about our cultural heritage and the innocence of my children and Ghanaian children. And the innocence of my children will not be mortgaged for any political party. And, 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 and like I said, President Mahama on his own has spoken. We've not heard from Dr. Baumia, so I can't say what his position is. But I've heard, and, that, and, and that's why a lot of people are holding President Akufado to his word. President Akufado has spoken at the Anglican Church, where he said it will not happen under his watch. So people are expecting you to walk your talk. Leadership is about walking your talk. I've seen people circulate a video from 2013 of myself talking about rights. They cut a video. It's a full 47 minutes interview on what was minority caucus at the time. And on that same platform, I stated clearly that homosexuality is a mental aberration of the highest order. And questioned at the time President Akufado, who had, at the time had not spoken about his sexuality, and said he should speak about his sexuality. And again, in 2013, you did not have... People opening an advocacy office for LGBTQ rights. 
So the situation then and now are not the same. So essentially what you're saying is what happens in, in their rooms is none of your business. I have absolutely no concern. And it's, what it's you none did. of the business of this law. It is not the business of, of this, this law. Bill, of, of, of this bill. Absolutely. This bill is not interested in what you do. It is when you choose to bring your private pro proclivity into the space of public discourse that public policy will apply to it. Because Alfred, how can I determine who you slept with last night in your bedroom? unless you choose to make it a subject of public conversation or allow evidence to appear before a competent court of jurisdiction. And again, let's not forget that in this, in this bill, for the first time, we codify protections for members of the LGBTQ community in Section 17, where we say that anybody who verbally or physically assaults a person on suspicion of involvement in an act prohibited under this bill or under this act, as it is, is, is stated, you will be subjected to section 84 to 87 of the Criminal Offences Act, which means you can go to jail for physically or verbally assaulting people. And that's why we impose a duty to report to relevant authority instead of people exacting jungle justice. Please, you can go to my description box and click on the Telegram link and join us on Telegram. What do we do there? We talked about the well-being of Africa. Other than that, if today is also your first time visiting this channel, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification button so that anytime I upload any great content, you will be notified. You can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook through I am the Graft handle. I am the Graft handle.